Yes, guys, welcome back to The Fanboy, and I'm joined with The Gaming Kid. And in today's video, we'll be doing another one of our debates, um, Marvel versus DC. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's, let's hear the first category. So the first category is new movies. Um, do you want to go first or should I? Uh, yeah, sure, I'll go first. So um, about a month ago, Kevin Prime released a bunch of new movies, um, such as Miss Marvel, Black Panther 2 somehow, they're going to film each other, I'm not sure. Um, they're going to release Spider-Man this year, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange, yep, my own my case. <laughs> um, Captain Marvel, which will have um, Miss Marvel, oh I forgot to say, they're making a Miss Marvel movie as well. Um, and also, we already know that Falcon and Winter Soldier, that's not a movie though, but it's okay. Still gonna be amazing. Yeah, it's gonna be really big. Um, what else? There's there. Uh, F Fantastic Four is another one. Um, One Division's killing it. One Division, One Division is really good because it's all based in Wanda's head and what she wants. Mm. Yeah, but there's a bigger world outside of her town. I feel like their biggest new release will be Guardians Three. Guardians 3 will be good, and there will also be a ho holiday special of Guardians of the Galaxy 3. It will be a holiday special with um, James Gunn coming back to the wreckage. Now, um, I know this is unbiased, so I'm going to be honest. I also feel like Marvel may have a little bit of an edge right now because they're um, involving a lot of the popular comic book Marvel characters, such as Wolverine and Fantastic Four. But anyways, now for my DC argument, because I'm DC. The first DC movie we're expecting to see is Zack Snyder's version of Justice League, which I cannot wait for. It's been like five years in the making, so that's going to be very, very big. Um, it'll be released to theaters um, as one full movie as opposed to just four parts, mm -hmm. like with HBO Max. So it does count as a full hours. movie. Yes, so it does count as a full movie. Um, James Gunn's Suicide Squad is releasing August 6th, 2021. I cannot wait to see that. Idris Elba, Bloodsport. Harley Quinn. Yeah, Bloodsport. The movie is finished. I cannot wait to see that. That'll be incredible. Um, and then we'd have to wait a little while for a new DC film because the next one we'd see is next year, and that is, I believe, the first movie that's supposed to come out is The Batman. But next year we'll also be seeing Black Adam, Aquaman 2, and The Flash, as well as Batman. That's a lot of new DC projects. And Shazam releasing the following year, and all of HBO's mini series for DC in the middle of that sort of. I feel like DC have a slight edge. But over to the uh, the tiebreaker. What is what do you say? What do you say? I'm actually, and it pains me to say this, but I feel like I'm actually going to give it just in terms of what I am looking forward to the most. Um, and what I think will probably resonate more with people, it's going to be Marvel. Um, I think that there were really... Marvel left off the last phase at a really high point with mm -hmm. Endgame, right? Um, smash records, everybody was going nuts over it, but... it and, and what have you. So they're, they've sort of like, they're, like, they're here right now, they're at the top of their game, right? Mm -hmm. And everything that they're adding to it, I feel like is just going to elevate it. And if you think about sort of where Spider-Man left off, if you think about where... Um, like even Endgame left off some of the characters and what their trajectory is going to be and even what's going to happen to the Guardians about. after Endgame like it's going to be very very interesting and the fact that they're not coming back with any solo movies for the main Avengers apart from Thor I think that holds a lot of weight for them that's what, that's having what, said that that's having what, said that so I do give Marvel the edge on this one but having said that I think the minute that DC releases Batman and if it goes the way that we are all hoping that it will and if it has as much success as Christopher Nolan's it's game over for Marvel because then at that point DC not only have the upper hand when it comes to TV shows which they clearly do right now as well as but the they HBO also have the upper they're going to have the upper hand with movies so right now it's Marvel wait until the release of that, that also, after Endgame that with DC um, Winter Soldier and Falcon that's all what it's about with the Captain America legacy also and also um I forgot to mention this. DC do have some of the best directors in the world right now. They got Matt Reeves. Um, they've got James Gunn. DC are stepping up their game. And JJ Abrams has been yeah. So it could get close to the next few years. And I'm not a big Tobey Maguire fan. Uh, I 
did not like him as Spider-Man. I thought he was very bad, but I know a lot of people do, so that's not going to help my case either. I will also tell you, I think that the turning point, perhaps for DC, and it's an opportunity here for DC, their turning point may be the release of Zack Snyder's Justice Justice League. League. Because that was also, I will say, no, that was also the point at which DC just started, like their fan base started going down, because the last Mm -hmm. Justice League was such a disaster. So they have an opportunity to course correct here it's their version of avengers endgame it's yep. this is what is setting up the new dc yep dcu yep anyways um let us check the next category and i will destroy uh, you whatever it is okay so we are talking characters now oh come oh, on let's go. i i'm gonna say right off the bat this is just gonna be too close to call for me <laughs> <laughs> but we'll start maybe we'll start with dc this time we started with uh marvel last time uh, if you're Marvel fans, please do not dislike the video. It's because of DC Marvel exists. It, it's, it is because of Superman that Stan Lee had the inspiration to go and create um, the Fantastic Four because that is Marvel's first family. So, you know, Superman came first, then it was Batman, then it was Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Only, year, only, a few, only a few years later did they start creating Marvel. Mm-hmm. Yes. And with Thor, I mean, I love Thor the character, but that's not Marvel's creation. You know that is a Norse god. That is not what Marvel created. Nor with Loki and Thor and Loki are some of the MCU's biggest hits. That is not. They did not create them. That's not. A, that's not original. Hulk was inspired by Frankenstein. That's not original. The only really original thing they've done is X Men. Because when people think of mutants, you think oh weird, creepy animals. X Men was original. Those were like they reimagined mutants. And same with the Fantastic Four, as well as, you know, Spider-Man. So those are Marvel's only good characters. Well, with DC, DC creates Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman, who are arguably the three most popular superheroes, besides maybe Spider-Man. No. And they spawn a universe of their own. Batman especially. I There are some people who, who say Batman is... like. Batman is considered to be a franchise of his own. You know, he spawned his own world. DC, it has the edge when it comes to characters, especially villains. Um, that's their strong point. There's Joker. Thanos is just a dark side knockoff. Bane. Like, DC have the edge. Alright, you know, so now let's hear from Marvel. You know, for someone who's a DC fan, you sure know a lot about Marvel. I like reading comics, though. I do like reading comics. Alright. And I don't um, hate Marvel. So, yeah. characters. Um, I... Personally, is my favorite. It's a fan favorite, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, the Fantastic Four, are amazing. Really like Mr. Fantastic, and I feel like one of the casting for Mr. Fantastic in the movies will be John Krasinski. Yeah, because I, I I just imagine him lighting up the silver screens. So, um, I also really like Iron Man, but um. By the way, this has spoilers in it, so if you're watching this and you don't know one game, turn off the video. Turn off it. Turn it off. Five second warning. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm very sad to say I love Iron Man, but he is dead. Very, very sad. And that's the end of that character. DC killed off Superman. They're still finding ways I know, to I know. bring him back and create more storylines. We can't see more Iron Man. That's a dead end. But... But here we, but here now, um, Ironheart is about Tony's daughter. No. But at the same time, it's about like how Pepper is also trying to continue Iron Man's story. Same with the daughter. So it's like really continuing his legacy. Yeah. Yeah. Like when when. It's going. It's going to go. Same with um Captain America's legacy. They're ke- continuing his legacy off with Winter Soldier and Falcon. They're continuing it on. Cap with the shield. The shield's been through a bunch, mm-hmm. and it's made with vibranium. It's so, sort of like so the I, whole um, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, exactly. the passing the mantle. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for me, this category actually has to be a tie, and I'll give you my my reasons why. I don't think that there are any more characters that are more iconic, especially more iconic than Superman. Mm-hmm. You could ask anybody on the planet, and there's Mickey, nobody that doesn't Mickey know. Mouse. It, yes. <laughs> well, when we're talking about superheroes, yeah. I think it has to be Superman. There's nobody on the planet that doesn't know who Superman is. Mm-hmm. Or probably Batman for that reason, too. Having said that, 
So well, I think that the iconic award probably goes to DC. What, about what I will say though, no. What I will say though is in terms of carrying on legacies, introducing new characters that are following in the footsteps of some of the characters that have done their life cycle. Robin, I it's not feel, Super Boy, Supergirl. No, I feel like Marvel has done a far better job. More people, and I'll give you an example, I'll give you a counter argument to that arc. I don't know Spider-Man. I don't, most people don't know who Kid Flash is. I, I wouldn't have unless I had two boys living in the house. Red Hood, people don't nobody, know nobody, Red Hood. Right? Nobody knows who Red, nobody really, unless you read comics and stuff, really know who Red Hood is. Or Claire. Almost, I'm going to say, almost anybody will know even who uh, like a, a Winter Soldier is. Right? No, yeah. it's because of the movie that Winter Soldier's popular. But they've introduced them into the movie, and that's True. what Marvel did a very good job of doing. They introduced them to the mass public as opposed to just be people that people, um, as opposed to be characters that people just read in comic books. Mm-hmm. They got them out there. DC has not done that yet. However, Superman still holds the mantle for most iconic character, and that's, that's why it's a tie. That's super strength. That's why it's a tie. Well, no, nope, super- that's no, because... Right. Because as soon as you say, even if you were to go on a game show and you were going to say, name a superhero, the first superhero that comes out of everybody's mouth, I guarantee you will be Superman. You have to pick one though. And you can't, I I can't pick one in this category. I gave the last one to Marvel, I really can't pick this one. Alright. Alright, so now we're going to move on to our next category and we're talking about TV shows. And I'm going to throw it back to you, we're going to start with you. Alright, TV shows, so... As we see, WandaVision is already a ginormous hit. The whole Wanda in her head thing with the whole TV show starting to Avengers, Vision, and Wanda. Um, and Falcon and Winter Soldier is also going to be a, an amazing show. Uh, same with Loki. Loki, um, the trailer was really good. In fact, I actually might do a breakdown of it. Um, and... I like how they're setting up more and more to the Marvel Cinematic Universe because they're not just making now shows, they're making the movies, they're making... Like, but we're the, just talking about TV shows in this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're making everything that they wanted to now. Yeah. You know, it, Marvel, yeah, they got, like, besides the trashy Defender show, come on! Marvel has, like, five episodes of TV shows. The DC has been able to make 10 seasons of Smallville. People still go and we watch that and they feel sure the same level do. of nostalgia, you know? And then they made Arrow, which was amazing, which got, you know, it, was just, it wasn't even because of bad ratings that it ended, it was because Stephen Mel didn't want to do it anymore. So then it got good ratings for like eight years. And then there was The Flash, seven seasons, on, seven seasons in, people still love that show. Supergirl, been able to sustain high ratings for six years now. Uh, Legends of Tomorrow, just uh, same thing as I said with Supergirl. The only show that's been suffering from you know not as good ratings is The Black Lightning, and that show's ending now. So you can't compare this, especially with the fact that HBO is doing what Disney Plus is. They're making DC spin-offs like um, they do with Marvel, and DC will be making a Hawkman, a uh, Catwoman one that's unconfirmed, but most likely going to happen. Hawkman, there's going to be a Peacemaker show, a Suicide Squad character after James Gunn's movie. Actually, with John Cena, uh, the Green Lantern show, that's been confirmed. The Gotham City Police show. DC will knock Marvel out of the park. So this category, guys, I'm actually going to give to DC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but now it's a tie. But it's a tie. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, yeah. So, hold on, let me just finish what I was going to say. So I am going to give this category to DC because I feel like they've done a far better, uh, far better job of coming to the smaller you. screen. <laughs> Um, but I will also say that given the pipeline of Marvel shows that is in the works right now, if you were to do this debate a year from now, it may be a very different conversation. But DC will also have their new shows out. Yeah, and we'll have to see how that's And Superman and Lois will be out by then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just because you you and I know we're going to enjoy that, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily a hit. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying a year from now, we also know that we'll probably enjoy the Obi-Wan show. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be good. We might True. enjoy the Falcon Winter and uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier show, but that doesn't mean that it will be a hit. True. So I think in a year from now we do this debate again, and then we really decide like how did the movies do, I'm in on that. and how did the TV shows do. Yes. Um, I realize that we are um, at a tie, uh, unfortunately. 
Uh, so it is our last round. We are at a tie. I'm not really sure breaker. what to say, guys. Um, Let's do a tiebreaker. There is no tiebreaker now. That's it? That's all the questions? Yeah. Oh, man. So we are at a tie. And I think that this just shows that you always will have... Okay. You will always have Marvel people in their corner, diehard Marvel fans, and you will always have DC fans in their corner, diehard DC fans. Okay. Uh, my advice would be appreciate the other one as well, mm -hmm. and remember it's an opinion. Yes. Um, 